Hi everyone, it's me, Rachel, and today I'll be doing my reading wrap-ups. No, excuse me. For May and June, um, May I read a few books, and June I only read two. Um, I would be on my chair right now, but there is a cat. Am I moving the right way? There's a cat on my chair who stole it. Anyway, um, the first book that I read for May was Barnhart by Jenna Wogan Wright. And um, I've been following her blog for quite a while. Her blog is um, Cold Antler Farm. She writes about her farming adventures. She started out pretty much renting property. Um, then she ends up quitting her day job and she eventually moves to her farm that she still has today. And she actually got another horse. Yes, she got another horse the other day, and it's like, oh my gosh. And I've kind of been there from the beginning since she started writing. And um, her first book will be Made From Scratch. I didn't have to look on the bookshelf. But it's excellent if you're into um, the farming and farming memoirs. Um, this is kind of a story of pretty much a kid who came off the streets and wanted to farm. Um, the community that she is from, um, she says Palmerton, that's not too far away from me. And around here we are a farming community, so she, I guess she kind of has influence from that as well. She's also um, what I want to call a born-again omnivore, because she um, became vegetarian and she was having a vegetarian lifestyle. But when she started to farm, she then kind of was there the process of um, raising the animals and slaughtering the animals and she became very comfortable with it and she accepted it and then it just kind of the humaneness humaneness I don't think it's a word the humane way that she was raised and the animals and slaughtering the animals were fine with her and then she turned into an omnivore again and she eats meat now which I think is pretty interesting um, not many vegetarians do that. When they go off a of vegetarian diet, they go pretty much back to the way they were, eating supermarket food and stuff like that. So I think it's pretty interesting if that's how she got off of eating a vegetarian diet. The funny thing is that my favorite story that she told tells is about tur the turkey talk. Leave, she called him Tom, of course. And Tom was supposed to be Thanksgiving dinner with her for her family, and they could not stand that they met this turkey and she had killed this turkey and expected them to eat it. It was so funny. And then Jenna wouldn't eat the turkey they had bought from the supermarket, so she went her vegetarian weight and ate tofurkey. So, it's just an interesting little story. I'm wiggling this back and forth, I'm so sorry. Next! Oh gosh, I can't remember what I read next. Next I read The Wide Window. And I absolutely hate Lemony Snicket's narrating. I, this, oh my gosh, it's just horrible. I love the books, I absolutely love the books. This is my second time still going into them. I haven't read many more of them, but I really should. Um, but I can't stand Lemony Snicket's narrating. Because first he whispers it, and then he yells, and then he whispers, and then he yells to kind of um, dramatize what he is saying, and it's just annoying because I'm driving in my car and I'm trying to turn up the volume, and the volume's not doing anything. Um, but overall, this whole series is really good. I have seen a few comments on Goodreads about how it was someone's first time around reading it. And they were probably in their 20s, they said they were, and they had not read these books as a kid and they couldn't get into them, which I thought was interesting. I wonder if anyone else has had that problem with a younger series and as like this is. But absolutely love The Wide Window, love The Miserable Mill. The Reptile Room is still one of my favorites. Um, I think the last one that Lemony, Lemony Snicket narrates is the Seer Academy, and I'm so looking forward to hearing Tim Curry again. 
next one I read was The Wrath and the Dawn, which I absolutely, absolutely adore. I actually got this copy at a thrift store for a dollar. Yeah, dollar. And I thought it was totally worth it. So, um, the main characters are going to be... I can never pronounce these names, and so in my head it was like, um... Khalid, Khalid, or Khalid, Khalid, Khalid sounds right, sorry, Sarazad, Sarazad, sure, that sounds right, but on the back, the synopsis on the back makes you think that this is the story of Sarazad. <laughs> telling these stories to Khalid and him falling in love with her and that's kind of what happens and kind of not what happens I think what happens in the book is a lot better than the synopsis on the back um, the synopsis is very very misleading once again um, but I absolutely absolutely adore this the chemistry between the two characters are from there from the beginning to the end and the only thing is Sarazad's friend, gosh, what is his name? Because I hated him. Um, maybe it's maybe it's best that I don't know his name because I hate him so much. For me, that's why I forget it. Jahal. Sure. Jalal. Jalal. So horrible pronouncing those kinds of names. But anyway. I hated him because he res wants to rescue her and no one asks her what she wants. It's always what he wants and stupidity ensues. It pissed me off and I hate him. And honestly, right now, I'm imagining that he's the antagonist because I absolutely hate him. Him and that other emperor thingy that he wants to marry his daughter to Khalid, and it's like, but I'm really excited to read the next one. I actually have it around here somewhere. Where are you? Where are you? Anyway, that's besides the point. Next one that I read is The Darker Shade of Magic. I kind of read this in between reading Crest because Crest I started, didn't have enough time to finish it before it got returned to the um, overdrive and I have to preserve it again um, but Darker Shade Magic is absolutely fantastic I mean I go from fantastic book to fantastic book it's like exploding my mind this is probably why I haven't really read that much either um, because it's just all these great books all at once but anyway Kel is the magician he's not just any magician he can go from one world to another world and or rather from London to London and there's um, the Grey London Grey London, Red London White London and Black London Black London is dead no one is alive there it's a dead world no, no one's supposed to go there either um, but it's a lie that comes along and love Delilah's character She's very headstrong. She just kind of wants action. She wants adventure. She wants all of this. And when she meets Kel, she sees this opportunity to get out of Grey London, where she's from, and everything's boring, and there's really no magic whatsoever. And she goes to, with Kel to Red London. But one thing is a little bit interesting about this is that the only reason why he took her is to get rid of, um, I don't want to call it dark matter, I forget exactly the terminology they use in the book, but it's this piece of black London that has these super powers, um, and it bleeds into your blood. It makes you very hungry for the power that it has, and it's kind of scary. Um, but the ending of this book I thought was kind of, oh yeah, 
This is why there's two other books. Yeah, don't do that, Cal. That's exactly how I felt. Um, but I'm looking forward to the next book, which is... Which is, I don't have it up here on my screen. So sorry. In a second. In a second. Scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. Sorry. I forget. It. But anyway, I'm excited to read the next book. And then the last book. I believe it's the last book of Conjuring of Light. But there's something about Cal and there's something about Delilah that makes me believe not only do they have some kind of romance coming on, um, which I really, really like the Schwab's um, gradual kind of style to get to the romance, but I think that there's something with Delilah that we don't really know quite yet. We know there's she's um, has some sort of magic within her, and that she needs to kind of harness and and be able to use this kind of magic. And I think we're gonna see that probably in the next book. Next, I have Cress, which is the third book in the Lunar Chronicles, and I'm almost in the Lunar Chronicles. The only thing about this particular um, installment is that. It's really, really hard to get past that first half of the book because it's just um, Cress and Thorn walking in the desert. It's so boring. Just do something. Anything. And then I was stupid enough to read a review on Goodreads about how bad thing after bad thing keeps happening. I'm like, oh, that is so true. I'm like, I don't... I kind of just ruined the series for myself. But I still will be reading Winter, um, which shall prove interesting. I'm kind of curious how this all ends, since they, I think Cinder really doesn't want to hurt Winter, since she had nothing to do with it. But we will see. And that's it for now. Um, right now, I am reading Bone, Shadow and Bone. Um, which is very, very good too. So I keep on getting all these very, very good recommendations from book two. I'm so excited. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.